So we went, we went out one night and um, it was in a very quiet place called Rotorua. There's not much going on in Rotorua in 1993. And we got to the hotel and a group of us, uh, only four of us, and it sounds like it's got to be a, a, an England, Ireland, Scotland joke, uh, a world <laughs> show, because um, it was sort of me, Gavin Hastings, Scott Gibbs and Nick Popwell. And we all sort of dropped the bags in and we sort of like ambled... Should we go if, you take, if, you take, if you take Hastings out of that, that is a dangerous trio. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it, it, was, it was just well meant. Again, it's, it's just again bonding and come on, let's go out for a quick beer. And we sort of say to the, the guy behind the room, so, uh, where's, where's your nearest pub? And he basically said, uh, the only pub, the only pub is go out in the hotel, you walk about a mile, and then you chuck a right of the lights, and you walk a mile, and the pub's up there. And we went, great, lovely. So we go out the hotel, we walk a mile, turn right of the lights, walk a mile find the pub, have a few drinks, have a great time in there, actually. It's a really good night. Most of we stay in there too long, so we start looking at our watches. Well, right, OK, better get going. Gavin's the captain, so he's like, yeah, no, come in, guys, so we'll get going. By the time we walk out, it is sort of the early morning, there, early hours in the morning. And we come out, and as I said, there's not much going on in the road through, so we, we, we're now a little bit wobbly. Do we really want to walk a mile to the traffic lights and then chuck a left and walk up? to the hotel up there. No, so Gavin had this great idea. Why don't we just walk straight across the farmer's field and we can go straight to the hotel. The lights of the hotel is, is on over there. We said, what a great idea. So we walked across the field and we're walking across the field for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. And, and we come to what can only be described as a ravine. And, and you're a little bit worse for wear. So you sort of, you look one way and there's no bridge. There's no bridge over there. Sort of look the other way. Oh, there's no bridge over there. So what do you do? You take a couple of steps back and you think about a run and jump and you're sort of like, no, that's, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. So what else do you do when you've already had a few drinks? It's like we find out how deep it is. So I think Gavin picked up something I'm not sure about the size of a, a pebble and he, he tossed it in this ravine. And we're, we're all four of us standing there, sort of literally wave, moving like this in the wind, waiting to hear a splash, waiting to hear it hit rock to see how deep it is. We hear nothing. So all of a sudden, I think, um, I think Scott Gibbs picks up something about the size of a, a house brick and he tosses it in. And I sort of like, it's still nothing. So Nick Popperwell goes off and he finds something like a, a small football, like a Gaelic football, and he tosses it in. And absolutely nothing. So I go off. I, I'll go, right, I'll, I'll find something. I'll, make, I'll find something that makes a splash. And I get this old moss-covered rock and it takes all my strength <laughs> to move this rock. It's huge. And I get it to the edge of the, the ravine and I tip it in, <laughs> thinking that this bastard's going to make a splash in, in that aspect. So I, I tip it in. And all of a sudden, as I tip it in, it's hard to explain. All this chain link, all this silver chain link come fizzing past me. I'm mean, literally fizz, fizz, fizz. Mm. And standing there like, I'm, what, what the bloody hell is that? <laughs> and as this chain link keeps on whizzing past, at the end of it, there's a and this goat <laughs> went flying down this ravine. <laughs> and, and we all stood there looking at each other as in, did that really happen? And, and again, <laughs> me, me, me being a, a, a city kid, so uh, I, I don't really frequent farms. I don't know, t I don't know farmers tie farmyard animals to objects like that. Um, I think we all look at each other. And I think Gavin turns around and says, I'll tell you what, lads, we, we'll just go back out to the street. We walk a mile down the road. We'll get to the lights and we walk a mile back out to the hotel. So... Yeah, no, I've never, uh, I've never found out what happened to that guy. <laughs> I, I do love story time with Uncle Jace. It's Jack and Oid. It's very best. It still, it still had an element of old school about it. And again, Clive comes in for a lot of stuff and all this. But one thing Clive was very good at is, is he believed in right. If you've, you've done well and you've won games, go out and enjoy yourself and stuff like that. And was, um, but it was, it was just one of those where it, we, we also. I still had, if I remember rightly, but we had a, a midweek game in a really weird yeah, way. Yeah, it was. So a, what Clive, it was midweek test, midweek test, midweek, midweek. Midweek, and Clive basically said, "Look, guys, you can go out and do whatever you like. Just do do not wake up the players for the midweek game because that'd be very unfair, and you've you've just won your second test, and all this and the other, um, which didn't exactly go to plan in that aspect." <laughs> go on. I uh, is this I'm, a golf not I'm not involved in this one. This is it. Um, well, you are car, involved. Think... You are, of course, you are involved. Because I wasn't involved in that. You, I'm... you, you were always <laughs> the instigator of where we went out. You started the nights. You planned it all for us. You were the 
You were the social secretary of creating carnage. No, I, I knew I knew the places to go. <laughs> I facilitated. I say, you were I a say no responsibility in what happens there. No, basically what happened is we Jace had organised this great night out and we've come back and I've, for some reason, I don't know what, how this has happened, I've ended up coming back with Austin Healy at about 4.30, something that I try to never do because <laughs> why would you want to be coming back with Austin Healy? I don't, I don't know. But anyway, we got back to the hotel. There was no buggies. Uh, there was no one in reception, just buggies lying there with keys in. So we decided to drive up to our room um, instead of walking up. We've sort of got up to where we are. I've turned the buggy around. We've both got out. We're walking towards the building and we just hear this massive boom. So obviously I've looked at Austin. Austin's looked at me and we've both said, good night, mate. And we've gone, <laughs> we've gone to bed. Now in this room, there was um, a re- the really fancy TVs that came out the bottom of the bed when, when they want to do a team meeting. So this bed's gone beep, 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 beep out the bed. 7.30, team meeting, everyone be there. So I've immediately got out going, fuck, me and Oz are in trouble here. Um, so we've walked into the room, I've sat next to Oz going, mate, should we just stand up now and get this meeting over with, pay what we've got to pay to repair it and, and, and move on. And Oz is like, no, no, let's, let's just see what, what's going on first. And anyway, so Clive comes in and Clive doesn't often get angry because he doesn't look very, he just, he just doesn't have that threat when he's angry, but he's fuming. And he's coming in like, right, lads, two things happened last night that, that basically do not fall into our code of conduct what we are as people and how we want to represent ourselves as England rugby and they need sorting out now and I'm like fuck come on I was standing. he's like hang on there's two things let's see what's see which one's worse he goes right I'm going to start with the one that's quite easy to deal with he goes first and foremost there is a golf buggy parked in room 31 of the hotel I don't know how it got there but it needs fucking paying for and sorting out so as I've gone to stand up I'll just hold me down and go let's see what's number one first he goes right and number one in reception, you will have noted noticed the velvet shrine around a around this bottle of this crystal decanter, which was full of Louis Trey uh, cognac. This was given to the hotel by Nelson Mandela to celebrate his release from Robin Island and the end of apartheid. It's not there anymore. And he's looked to Lol and he's called Lol. He goes, Lol, you're in charge of this shit show. Make sure I want everything sorted now. And Lol does. Lol's like. The chin's fully gone out. He's, he's got a right head on now. And so he, we have this numbering off system and he's gone, right, everyone number off. So he, so basically alphabetically, one to 35, go. So we all go and we figure out that Danny Grucock's not there and, and uh, Dave Flatman. So I've seen Lol, he's beelining for, for Danny's room. So anyway, as, as we sort of walk here, as I'm following him, there's like boom, boom, boom on the door. And Danny, it's pitch black in there. And, uh, and Lol walks over the curtains, opens it, Streaming light coming in, and and Danny's like, whoa, 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 what's the matter? He goes, have you seen a crystal decanter? And he's like, well, what, what are you talking about, Lol? He goes, well, what the fuck is that on top of the TV? I don't care what you fill it with, but it's got me back on reception right now. So if you ever go to the uh, Westcliff Hotel in Joburg, please do not drink the Louis tray in the in the shrine because it is <laughs> not cognac anymore. I dread to think what it will be. Perhaps you'll pop in for a quick nightcap when we're out there for the Lions, Chase. I don't <laughs> well, know yeah. we can have a little... Well, um, it'd be interesting, a, a it'd be interesting to go and see if it's still there. It sure. does sound like a lot of fun playing for England 